Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to lay down a little synth part and we're going to explore the envelope 1 and macro parameters. So this time I'm going to search for sounds but instead of browsing via the disclosure triangles I'm going to search in the search field over here. Now all of the factory sounds have keywords that are associated with the sounds programmed into the factory and you can search by keywords like that. Now I know that the sound I want is in the synth category so I'm going to type in the search field here. I'm going to click there and type in the keyword synth and hit OK and have it return to me now a subset of instruments that are associated with the keyword synth. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to first of all select my next part and I'm going to scroll down to the patch Megapad. So let's load that in and it's loaded into slot 5 now which by default is associated with MIDI channel 5 and I'm going to leave it like that for now. Now if I want to reveal all of the instruments here and have it revert to the full display there's two ways I can do it. One way is by calling up the search field again and clicking OK with a blank field. That way it'll return me to the full view. The other way is to press the All button over here. It's already reverted so there won't be any change but if I click on the Megapad and you see it there and I click All it'll revert the field to displaying all the sounds with the disclosure triangles closed. Alright, let's put a simple part down. I'm going to lower the volume, make sure we have a sound here, and I'm going to select in logic the appropriate channel, which is 5 here, and I'll call it synth. And we'll put a quick part down. I'll just hide this. I'm toggling the view using the V key in logic. Okay, so I have a simple part there. And what I want to do now is adjust some of the parameters. Let's call up the envelope 1 parameters by clicking here. And with that instrument selected, we're going to see all these parameters up here that are pertaining to the envelope 1 settings of the Megapad sound. Now these envelope 1 parameters are ways of adjusting the amplitude envelope of the sound, meaning how the sound is shaped over time. So let's solo the part, and we're in loop mode in Logic, so I'm just going to play it. All right, now we can hear that the attack is a bit obscured or dulled. The value here corresponds to about 150 milliseconds. So first thing I want to do is I want to slow down the attack. So listen as I play it. Actually, what I'm going to do is loop just the last few bars because the part's a bit busier there. So I'll do that like that. That way we'll hear it a bit more consistently. So what I can do is loop that and I'll adjust the attack time down and you'll hear the sound coming in a bit more sharper and crisper with each note on. You hear the attack is obscured. And they're nice and sharp. The release parameter will allow for how much sound sounds through once your fingers are off the keyboard. Now I played fairly staccato so there's not that much effect it's going to have but the lower it is the more staccato the sound and the higher it is the more you'll hear the note linger once the actual length of the note recorded has been finished. See very staccato? So I want to leave it fairly short. I'm going to leave it like that. The hold, decay, and sustain parameters are further parameters to affect the slope of the sound over time. You can experiment with those. They have different effects on different types of sounds. Level control affects the level of the entire amplitude, as you'd expect. But this is particularly powerful if you're doing zone editing. Like, for example, if you have a drum map and you want to bring up just the hi-hat sound or bring it down, you can go into zone mode and go into envelope 1 and lower just the level for that one zone. Very powerful. So that's why I want to adjust the envelope 1 for this sound. I want to look briefly at how the macros work. Macro is another set of controls that can be displayed via these radio buttons here. I'm going to click Macro, and the controls here change on top. 
Now, macros are interesting. They're factory programmed parameters that are hardwired into the instruments themselves, put there by the programmers, and they're unique for each instrument. So they have controls that are specifically relevant to the type of sound that they're controlling. Like, for example, in the first drum kit we were working with, they controlled the kick level and the snare level. But they can do other things as well. Let's take a look. So you can reveal what the parameters are, or the definitions of them, in this menu up here. When you click on the sample tank icon, you'll get this second layer of menu underneath. And when you click on the name of the instrument, in this case Megapad, you'll see the macro definitions associated with this instrument. So here we have voltage controlled amplitude attack time, which is a fancy way of saying another attack time controller. The second slot is empty, as you can see it grayed out here. And then we have velocity to volume, and finally a fine tuning parameter. So let's play our part and see if we need to adjust these at all. That'll obscure the attack again a bit. Touch is an interesting parameter. It has the velocity and volume interacting. The lower the touch value, the greater the volume at lower velocities, etc. I'm going to leave this at these settings for now. They're not having a dramatic effect on the sound, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. And if I click here again, we'll go back to the default display. So that's it for this video. Just to uh, summarize what we've done, we called up a sound in the fifth slot, which is assigned to MIDI channel 5, and we searched using the search field over here by typing in a keyword, and then we reverted to displaying all the parameters by searching again with an empty field, and you can also do it by using the All button there. We played in and recorded a part, and then we called up the Envelope 1 parameters and shortened the attack time and shortened the release to get a bit more of a staccato sound and a sharper attack. And then we looked at the macro controls by clicking on this button, and then revealing the definitions of them here by clicking twice in this display to get to the definitions of the macro parameters, which are parameters that are hardwired into each instrument. So I'm going to end off by just playing back our sequence, and we'll hear everything that we have up to this point. I'm going to lower the volume of this a bit, and I'm going to set the polyphony lower. We haven't really been doing that as we're going along. I'll set this down to 12, and I'll set these for these base layers down to even 4. That should be fine since we're not really doing anything polyphonic in them. And I'll just put the cycle mode back to the default length. And let's listen. All right, so there you have it. We're going to tweak the sound more as we go along. That's it for now. Stay tuned. See you next time for more.